Good evening, and welcome to The Parent Impact. I'm your host, Tafshir Cosby, and this is presented by the National Parents Union. Welcome, everyone. We're glad you came through tonight, Tuesday, November 24th. You could have been anywhere, surfing the net, watching Netflix, <laughs> but you are here with us, and we are appreciative. So let's get into some of the things we normally get into each week. The city of Newark is first. You know, that, that's our home. That's, that's the place we love. Um, so many community service agencies for this last week, for this Thanksgiving week. I'm just so proud and I'm just so happy to see all these community service organizations come together, working with the mayor's office, working with each other to make sure that families have turkeys and food boxes. I think from the count that I have, just from you know being in, in the mix and, and watching different places give out food and give out turkeys, I'm sure we have given over well over 10,000 turkeys in our city, well over 10,000 boxes from community organizations and philanthropic partners who were donating food. And I just want to give everybody uh, a clap for that and also clap for yourself, City of Newark. I think in times like these, we come together as community members, we come together as coalitions, and we really make sure that the people in our city have what they need, that families don't go hungry. And it's, it's really a show of community and gratitude for each other within the community. So I'm just happy that so many people have gotten turkeys and are able to feed their families at Thanksgiving. We know that we're going to have a lockdown as of tomorrow, a 10 day lockdown. So please just be mindful when you are having your Thanksgiving events with your families that you don't have too many families there. But if you do, please make sure that you have ventilation and people wearing their masks and things like that. We do want to make sure that people are safe, right? We want to make sure that by the time we get to Christmas, right? If you have a large gathering for Thanksgiving, by the time you get to Christmas, people are safe and everybody is well in your house. So again, kudos to the city and all the organizations that have come together to make sure that families have turkeys and food for Thanksgiving. It's, it's, it's an enormous outpouring and, and it really does my heart. Um, it warms my heart to, to just see it. I know we do it all the time, but it really warms my heart to see so many people being helped around this time. So thank you, Newark. Such a blessing. Such a blessing. So New Jersey, same thing. We are still in COVID lockdown. The numbers are going up across the state. So please mask up everybody. Mask up Newark. Mask up New Jersey. Be safe out there. Be careful. Um, Governor Murphy sent a letter to the GSA administration, Administrator Emily Murphy, he sent it specifically for vaccines, and that's going to be a conversation that we're going to have on the show in 2021 um, about how families feel about vaccines, how do you feel about it for yourself and for your children. But we hope that his letter, although it was about vaccines, was one of the many, with along with the other governors from across the country who have um, prompted the certification, finally, of the presidential election. Yay, finally. And now we can move on as a country, right? We can move on. Um, President-elect Biden, um, Vice President, they can move on. They can now get briefings, find out what's going on, so we can now move our country forward. So thank you, GSA Administrator Emily Murphy, for getting this thing rolling, getting this ball rolling, and getting this thing moving. So tonight, I have a super special guest with me tonight. She is a community member in the city of Newark. I think everybody knows her in the, in the city of Newark. Um, she is always out in her community, even when she's not feeling well. She's always giving of herself to not only her family, but to other community members. She's done so many things for seniors, giving seniors packages and, and letting everybody know where they can buy hand sanitizer and Clorox wipes and, and all those things. You know, and she does this as a, as a working mom in the city, working full time, having her own family to take care of. So we appreciate everything that she's doing, but she's also um, a health and a wellness um, coach for families. She wrote this amazing, amazing book, Define Your Path. It's a really great book. It really works to help you work through whatever issues you're having and really think about what your path looks like for your life. So this is this amazing book. I have mine. I had it for about a year. So it's, it's filled. I don't really want to show my stuff, <laughs> but it's, it's an amazing book. And we are super, super happy to have her here on the Parent Impact tonight. So please, please, a warm, warm welcome for Miss Latrice Smith. Uh, hey, Latrice. Hi. <laughs> How are you? I'm great. 
Good. I'm so glad. I'm so so glad to see you. Yes. I thought you were gonna have on your unicorn. I thought you were gonna put your unicorn. So I was just trying to figure out what message that I wanted to say. I had so many things to say. So look, I just said some of everything today. But yes. talk about the holidays, I put on the turkey. Thank you. We appreciate you always in costume. Uh, yes. You know, for, for the kids, for the people, for the family. Like really just, and always having a smile, you know, on your face. Because I think this laugh and the smile just makes everything go away. It's just, that's Absolutely. the cure to mostly everything. So that's why I like to dress up and just, you know. So guys, I have like four different statements on right now. I didn't know which one you wanted, but I'm here for it all. We like all the statements. I absolutely love that shirt. The future is female. Sorry, guys, but the future is definitely female, right? We are definitely out here doing it. We have, you know, a, a, a black and Asian. These shirts are twenty dollars. You can ask. Okay. The shirt, the female is on the future is female because we have this. Okay. Okay. I have our pearls on due to our vice president. Ms. Yes, ma'am. Oh, I should have put my pearls on. I'll wear my pearls next week. Exactly. I wasn't even thinking. <laughs> I didn't put my pearls on. You know, it, it signifies power, strength. It says all the things that people think that we could not do that we are now doing. So yes. I encourage all black women all day, every day, no matter where you are or your position, put your pearls on. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. I'm going to go put mine on for next week's show. Y'all going to see me with my pearls for next week's show. So exactly. how are you? How are you doing? How's your family holding up in this COVID, COVID environment? How's, how's, what's going I, on? Well, definitely with COVID, I think that I am much better now than in the beginning of COVID. My anxiety okay. was on high. I was like mopping, sweeping at least four to five times a day, wiping everything off. I even had my daughter when she was working at Wawa's and on Maplewood. I had her take a month off. I was just like, we can't go to work. It's just crazy. We can't go outside. It was yep. just like, and then when she was still going to work, like come in, take your uniform on, wash your hand, no shoes in the house. It was definitely, definitely like my anxiety was extra high. But when things calmed down, um, I, I feel a lot better. I'm not cleaning up as much. Okay. You know, I'm still disinfecting. I wait till they go to sleep. I disinfect the house, do the doors. You know, just I, I, I don't mop as much. So okay. Because it caused it, the anxiety was higher in the beginning of the pandemic. Yeah, so and I, I didn't understand. Yeah, yeah, and I'm sure you weren't alone, right? I'm sure you were not alone. You know, with anxiety, we didn't know where it was coming from, how you could get it. You know, was it airborne? Did you touch people? Was it from just being in, in somebody's space, people breathing on you? Like, we just really didn't know where it was coming from. So I'm sure you were not alone um, with that anxiety, but I'm glad that, that things are better. I know a lot of people, you know, we lost so many people definitely in the beginning from not understanding how to protect ourselves. And, you know, right. so now right. that we actually learned a lot more, I'm like, my anxiety is still there a little bit. I'm telling people, um, I'm always close. They go get tested, go get tested, especially you in North. There's so many free testing sites. There's no reason yeah. why you can get tested. But I am aware because I have teenage daughters uh, that the young people are actually afraid to get tested. They think it's hurting and, you know, they don't want to just, just go through the process. But it's very, very yeah. important to go through the process. So I tell them all the time, if you love your parents and you love the other people that you want to be around, you should go get tested. If you That's don't right. want to get tested, don't risk their lives because if you don't want to get tested, stay away. Absolutely. Because they may not have symptoms, but somebody else may. That's very true. That's very true. Hi, Christina. Hi, Christina. Christina gave us a shout out. Beautiful. How beautiful ladies. Hey, Christina, last girl. Hey, Christina. How you doing? <laughs> National What's Parent Union Director of a Policy. Super, super, super awesome. Super dope woman. Yeah. We love Christina. But definitely, we, I think when it comes to like this COVID, we have to have a build, build time conversation with our youth and let them know. So even my daughter's here for the holidays, you know, we can't go out. We love like interacting with a lot of people. She hasn't really like been like embraced me properly. You know, we mm -hmm. tomorrow together as a family. And okay. She just, like, Ma, I just don't, you know, I know that I'm okay and I'm feeling good, but I just don't want to be responsible if anything right. goes with you and i like that she's taking that responsibility you know yeah we're, in the house, but we're not we're still staying six feet away from each other you know we're spraying and we disinfecting and washing our hands so we're still trying to play it safe and i think that you know in real time we need to explain to these kids what can happen and the outcome because they don't take it seriously and Absolutely. It's like they don't understand to take it seriously because we're right. not having real time conversations right I agree. We, we definitely need to have those conversations with, with the young people because, you know, they think they they already think they're invincible. Right. So this is just something else to be invincible about. Yeah, um, so they like I said, you, they have yes, to understand that we're not. Exactly. 
Exactly. We, we, we're not as young as we used to be. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. We're not as young as we used to be. So. As as we want to be. And we're not as young as we want to be. You know, I still feel like 25 in my mind, though. Like sometimes, you know, my, my body tells me when I get out of bed in the morning, my body tells me one thing, but my mind is still like, hey, you know, I'm still cool. But then my kids let me know very quickly that I'm not. So I have to like acquiesce and be like, all right, okay. I'm I'm a I'm a 80s and 90s baby. I accept it. I accept it. I'm rolling. Tells me all the time, not the kids, so. <laughs> yes. so you feel my pain. Yes. So like I said, you are an amazing community member, right? You have been doing so many things for so long. We met a few years ago through Bayo. Um, we when we were together through Bayo, organizing parents, helping parents to empower themselves. Um so, you know, a lot of the things that you do in the community, especially through COVID-19, you've helped a lot of our seniors. Um, so tell us more about your work in the community and things that you do with, with some of our seniors, senior members of our community. So during COVID, in the beginning, like when I really understand it, I know we were having a hard time actually getting supplies. So when I went to the store and I was able, it was no limit in the beginning, you know, we can get as much as we want or whatever. So when I started picking up things, I was like, oh, let me give a couple to the seniors because they can't get anything. So I, I right. started creating senior bags and I was like texting my friends, if you know a senior who needs it, let me give it to them. And then it came that I, a couple of my friends started having COVID. So I was like, oh, I need to create COVID care bags. You know, mm -hmm. not just for the seniors, mm -hmm. but for those who have COVID because they need to be able to disinfect your house, not put some tea bags, honey, lemon, like just a care package to let them know that as a community, we also love you. So those are the things that I wanted to start doing. But then when it started getting really, really bad, I was like, okay, we need to do more. Yeah. So I, I made a connection with a store and on, on Spiritual Avenue Dollar Tree, and I made a, a connection where I was able to get a lot of supplies, where I was able to create over 100 care bags to give out to the community. So it was yeah. not just it was two people who also suffer um COVID and you know one of my, my best friend's sister passed away from COVID and I just I'm think sorry. that we need to, thank you and I just think that we need to be able to help each other as a community um, we all in it together and if we think like that that we're all in it together and we help each other instead of you know you have a lot of us that's being hoarders and taking it off ourselves but then you have those who also help it's not just me helping there's other people out in the community that does the same thing right if we start sticking together doing this that's one less family that we have to worry about contacting COVID. so if we if we handle it like that we as newark can fight it together and that's that's what absolutely I, that's that's my goal so that's what absolutely and we we as the community appreciate everything that you're doing um for our seniors for other people in the community um like you have on your your turkey hat right a lot of people can can catch you for different holidays right in a different costume you know out there making the kids happy making the kids you know laugh and just out there smiling as you always do you know just just really bringing cheer bringing cheer and happiness to our community so yeah. we, we really really appreciate that it's, it's important you know like as a young child, like if when you when you purchase my book, which you show, which you know, you purchase my book, you'll learn a lot more about me. So, you know, I've been a child who ran away from diapers and the system. My mother got sick, you know, and I had a whole buff kind of lifestyle. So I wanna make sure that other kids don't have to have that and experience. Right. So I get back. So if it's even if it's with a smile or just, just dressing up and people like, Oh, look at her and they take a picture, like I'm giving back, I'm making a difference. A smile lasts a long time. People Absolutely. They remember feelings. They may never remember your name or things like that, but they always remember how you made them feel. So Absolutely. That's Absolutely. And you bring a smile to so many in our community. So you talked a little bit about your background and, you know, some of the things that you've gone through as a younger person. Um, tell us about your, your journey to be a health and wellness coach, specifically for uh, mental health uh, awareness. Okay, so this is, it goes back to when I said, so my mom, when I was younger, she was dealing with mental illness. Mental illness is something that we don't discuss in the community as well. And you can imagine back then, no one understood what it was because it wasn't talked about. So when whatever my mom was experiencing, we didn't know as kids. You know, we just know diapers came, they separated us, they put my mom in the hospital, and we just, that was it. We never knew what was going on. So yeah. when we got older, we started understanding, and then we, I started experiencing some mental illness. I wanted to understand more, like, is it hereditary? What's going on? You know, because mental health is hereditary, is yeah. environmental, and is, um, I'm going to kick my butt. It's, it's three <laughs> things. It's a very hereditary, is environmental, and it's taught. And right. You got to understand that. So, and, and being taught is, is horrible, too, because we, we mimic what we see. Right. right? So, 
And those are the things that I wanted to, to learn. So I started going to school. I went to Pillar College. I did not finish yet. I have one semester le left to become my, um, to get my bachelor's in psychology. Mm -hmm. Yes, I'm going to do it in January. And so um, awesome. that, that started my journey. So and then, I, so what I did was I created Embrace and Arms. And what that does is it get back. I'm actually a psychoeducator. I don't do therapy sections. What right. I do, I create, I create an outline where people can learn coping skills that we that we create together. And right. it's just all do fun and play. Because when you talk about therapy and you do those, it's a stigma around it. So people right. are like, oh, I don't want to go to therapy, mental health. I'm not, it's nothing wrong with me. But when they're having fun, they're laughing, they're doing art activities, and, and you know, they heal. Because they Absolutely. think it's all about artwork. But no, it's actually, it's, it's a process. We're learning how to cope and you're learning how to express yourself through art and through fun and through laughter. And that's what Embracing Arms is all about. Absolutely. And I know you have a module that you work with some, some young students. You work with like... Uh, high school students or middle school students, you do kind of like um, so one of the one of the things that I do that everybody seems to love is called the emotion puppet, where we yes. create a, a puppet and and we just whatever you feel, we talk about where emotions come from. A lot of people, a lot of people since we're doing it like this, a lot of people don't know that emotions. They so the thing I say, where do emotions come from? Does it come from your heart or does it come from your brain? And right. you know, it actually comes from both. People just some people would just say your heart, but it actually mm -hmm. comes from both. And so when we start understanding that and we go through a whole lesson about it, then we I ask them to draw out whatever the emotions that they feel. And then once they draw out the emotions that they feel, it could be pictures, words, however, whatever they're going through, they actually act it out through a puppet show. And by acting it out, they're releasing it. So they're no longer holding on to it. So a lot right. of people, oh, I don't have anything to draw. I don't have anything to write. So once they sit there and just, just start just coloring and doing with the art paper, a lot of the emotions have come out. And it's for all ages. And I was really surprised. I even did it with adults. And to do it with adults and see how much emotions that they was holding in, it was just like, wow. You know, yeah. I, I love yeah. it. Because everybody, everyone still has that kid in them. Everyone likes to play in color. We just don't right. realize that we don't take that time out. We have to sometimes just take time out and just like, let me just have fun. Let me just do this. And just exactly. So out. And release your emotions, right? Be able to release your emotions and, and get it out there. Um, I feel like I'm having some static with my voice. I don't know what's happening with my no, computer. I didn't, I didn't hear it. Okay. Okay. I, I think I hear some feedback, but I, I think it's going out. Okay. That's good. <laughs> so, you know, you, you wrote the book and I remember when you wrote the book, it was actually a book that was written by you, but it was adopted as a curriculum at the college that you went to. So tell us a little bit more about that. So um, for, the, for the, the palette of the class, we had to write it. We had to do a capstone. For one of the classes, we had to do a capstone. And when I created the capstone, my professor, she was like, people need this. And I'm like, huh? She's like, people really need this. You need to put this in a book. And I'm like, I don't have a story to tell. She's like, everybody has a story to tell. And this is powerful. to tell so many people in this class just by doing this presentation. So Absolutely. it took me at least two years to write the book because I didn't know what to say. I just used the example from the class to put it in there at first, but it wasn't a story. It wasn't a book. And although it's still not a story book, it's a workbook that helps you to focus on you. So a lot yep. of people think when you say a book is you're going to read it all about me. It's not all about me. It's about you. So it, right. I, I lost my way trying to find out who I was, you know, being a teenage mom, living with diapers, having mental illness, having my mom with mental illness, like a lot of forgiveness and a lot of hurt. You kind of lose who you are. And I needed to find myself. So with this workbook that I have, like I'm going to show it again. It's called Define the Path. It's a workbook. And with this right. workbook, you actually have some work that you need to do for yourself. So when you learn about me, how I lost myself, and then how I found myself, then it's a way in there to ask you questions about, how, were you there? Were you experiencing all these feelings? Have you been lost? And it's also biblical. So it doesn't even matter what religion you are, but it's just biblical that you, it, use, it works with the Bible. But it just lets you know that when you find yourself in your religion and you find yourself grounded with yourself, that you, you become better. You have to stop being around a whole bunch of noise, people, places, and things. You have to just sit still and just work on yourself sometimes. And that's what Absolutely. the book basically talks about. Absolutely. And it, it definitely challenges you to dig deep, right? And answer some of those questions in the book. We had uh, Siobhan Anderson on um, a few weeks ago. Um, she talked about her book, Healing Her. You know, and I said the same thing. I have both of your books and, you know, both of your books have really challenged me 
to really go deep into myself and ask those deeper questions of myself um, about, you know, things from my past, things from my childhood, things that have shaped me, who I am now. You know, even now as, as an adult, you know, grown woman, I still go through challenges and I'm still going through things and I'm still growing as a person. So answering those tough questions, right, is helping. Yeah, and, and with the book, like, is nobody has to read it. Only person you're lying to or telling the truth to is yourself. Exactly. It's your challenge. So you're only going to get out of it what you put into it. So if you put all of yourself into it and you're really concentrating to write down what you're thinking, what your thoughts are, what you want to be, that's what you're going to get out of it. You're going to get something. But the end, the end result is always people, places, and things. You have to set yourself up what you want. So sometimes if you want to go places... So everybody's not meant to go with you. And you got to learn that. So you're going to have to separate right. from some of those things of people that's holding you where you at and stuck in them same old places so you can get where you need to be. That's right. Amen. A amen to that. You, you know we know. Amen to that. <laughs> uh, but, <laughs> and we talk a lot about gratitude, right? I know you, you know, we we both took the Ally SEL class. Yes. Um, and we, you know, we talk a lot about gratitude for ourselves, gratitude for others, and just the gratitude for life in general. Um, we know that gratitude, right, is a powerful tool to em for to embrace mental health um, and wellness and things like that. So what's, what's your thought process on how being grateful as a person and really having gratitude helps people with, with their mental health, especially in times like this? You know, uh, holiday, holiday times for a lot of people can be very difficult. I know even for myself and my family, Thanksgiving was my mother's favorite holiday. You know, so a lot of us would get a little melancholy around this time, thinking about her not being with us, not being able to, to enjoy Thanksgiving with us and not being here to see her grandkids and her great grandchildren and things like that. So like, how does how does gratitude help people kind of ground themselves? You guys have to take in, and like, I'm gonna just use you for example. You, I think that, you know, yes, it's a hard time for you guys right now, but you also should be grat have gratitude and show gratitude that you all are able to come together so you all can share in the memory of her. Right. You all can work together and start doing one of her favorite recipes, share one of her favorite stories, pass that down, like show gratitude and, be, and, and just be grateful that you guys had that moment, had those memories that you had with her. And right. I learned from being in LES, SEL was that gratitude and thank you is two different things. And right. I, I didn't appreciate I didn't know that. I was like, huh? So gratitude is more like our appreciation for things. Thank you is like somebody just opened the door for you and you know that they was being courteous and you just go, thank you. you right. know? It's like, oh, you know, that, that 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 was just like not a deep appreciation. It was just, you know, it's a courteous mm -hmm. thing. It's just polite to say thank you. Gratitude when you appreciate the fact that somebody opened that door for you. Maybe I had all these bags in my hand and I couldn't do it for myself. You know, right. and it, it is those things that we just have to just take into consideration. Like, I'm grateful for one of my neighbors. You know, he came and gave me a ham, a turkey. He gave me ribs, corned beef. He was like, yes. Hey. So what that showed me was now I don't have to spend as much money that I really didn't have to go try to get all these foods for Thanksgiving. So right. it wasn't just a thank you that I want to tell him. Like, I'm, I'm really grateful for him. Like, because he's he's always showing up, and you know, so when people, when you're grateful for people like those in, in those kind of actions, you want to go back out and do more things for for not just for him, but for other people, because that's what you when you're grateful and you show gratitude, gratitude you want to give it. It's something that's worth giving back to other people. You Absolutely, share that gratitude with everybody, and that's something that you guys can do for Thanksgiving. Like, share that gratitude, share that you know the memory of your mom. Be grateful what she taught you and what you had, those memories. What's, yes. her, favorite, what's her favorite dish that you guys know how to make? Yes. Um, cornbread. <laughs> cornbread was like one of the, one of the things no, that, that she made a lot of. Cornbread. You would say cornbread because you don't want to eat meat. But that's... Oh. <laughs> no, no. She had, so she had uh, a really old uh, cast iron pan that was actually her mother's that was like that was her mother's mother's. So it was, you know, it was um, broken in and it was seasoned and it was smooth and she would never really let us cook with it because she's like, you guys are going to like mess it up. But so she would make that in the oven. Like she would always make cornbread in this pan and it would just come out so amazing. You know, it was uh, like a, what they used to call a whole cake. You know, she was from Miami. So it was like a whole cake or a Johnny cake, they used to call it. And it just used to be amazing. It was creamy. It was buttery. And she used to make it from scratch, right? She didn't use like Jiffy. You know, she didn't use, you know, Washington. <laughs> she made it from scratch. And it was just a okay. Um, I do not know how to do that. <laughs> My sister does know how to do that. So 
So I think that she'll probably be the one making that the cornbread in, in memory of our mom. Um, she did actually like one thing that she really, really liked was like big earrings, right? She made, she used to like really like the earrings that you have on, she would have loved those. You know, she just liked really big jewelry. And, you know, so that's something that we do every year for like her birthday. We'll all put on like really big earrings and we'll just like channel, channel her spirit. Um, but it's definitely something I think that we can do for, for Thanksgiving, you know, just, just channel. Difference with the gratitude, you grateful, it, it fills you up and it, and it shows because you smile it and it shows you like your whole attitude changes when you talk about it. That's yeah. What it does for you. It gives you this feeling and it's just worth smiling, it's worth sharing and it just, I don't know. I, I just, I don't know. So that's what I think gratitude is for the holidays for me. And like, yeah. so my kids will be here. We're not doing much with anyone else. It's just going to be us. But I am grateful for that. That's and I'm going to create some family memories with them. So the two, the oldest and the youngest are going to have a macaroni bake off, you know? So like, yes. I'm grateful for those moments right now that I have with them and just create wonderful memories with them that when, when I'm not here or whenever something go, you know, that they have those to memories to live off of and they can just carry on that you know just keep talking about it be grateful for that so absolutely absolutely well thank you so much for that that, that really oh, did make me smile just i'm about to say i hope i did well with gratitude, uh, gratitude yes that really did make me smile thinking about you know just I being know. grateful like you said for the time that we had her and, and the memories that that we do continue to have so what are some other ways that you know family members yeah, I mean, just, just thinking about it, you know, it just makes me smile. So what are some other ways that, that people can can be able to help their families, you know, go through um, sadness or, or depression in, during these holiday times, um, you know, especially people who suffer from mental illness? You know, what are some other ways that, that they can be able to help themselves or their family members um, during holidays? Well, I'm not going to suggest that we visit each other. So I always say a phone call, FaceTime, we could do Zoom, you got... Um, well, something that we don't do as much anymore is write a letter and actually yep. so they can actually see your handwriting and some, add a little personal touch send a picture, make a homemade gift, you know, all those things right. there's so many different things that we can do right now to make people cheer up, especially re just reaching out to somebody, rather you talk to them all the time on Facebook, inbox, or phone call you know, definitely, you know just those kind of things, we definitely have to stay in touch, create a memory with them. So even if they, you guys are in the same house together, do something new that you normally don't do. Um, create a t-shirt, dress up, you know, Yeah. yeah. Face, do face shoes, you know, eat breakfast together. You know, just, it's, it's a lot of small, simple things that you can actually do for free that don't even cost a lot of money. Sit down Absolutely. in the room on Thanksgiving and watch a movie. What movie you want to watch tonight if you haven't even done it and make some popcorns or peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Just all sit there together and have right. a conversation. Right. Continue to connect with each other. I think this uh this year for Christmas we usually watch um the Polar Express, uh Christmas Eve. For for Thanksgiving, I think we're gonna watch Jingle Jangle. I know everybody's been watching Jingle <laughs> Jingle Jangle on Netflix. <laughs> Um, I did watch it once by myself and I was like this, I was like standing up in the living room jamming. So when, you know, when, when, when my kids come over, um, the, the adults, the, when they come over, the ones that don't live here, they're going to watch Jingle Jangle and we, you know, we're just going to have a good day. We're going to eat and, you know, just, just really enjoy each other's company. Truly. We have um, three movies on our list. We have Jingle Jangle. We have on um, Cruise 2. And okay. We have on um, Come Away. Come Away is like a Alice in Wonderland, Peter Pan type movie. And with those are three movies we're going to watch. Um, I really wanted to go hiking um, with the family, just me and my kids, because, you know, hiking is my new thing. Um, yes, so. Miss Adventurer. Miss yeah. Adventurer, I'm, 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 I'm going to join you guys one of these morning. Um, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I'm going to call you out now. You are, you are, yes, you yes. Live. I'm <laughs> going to call you out. So part of it, so with the hiking thing, that's my new thing. That's why I actually dedicate my self-care. Nothing right. else, nobody else. So every Sunday I hike, and that's not for anybody else. I don't cook. Yeah. I don't do anything. Nobody can ask me to do any favors on Sunday. I actually learn to be selfish on Sunday because yeah. that's my self-care. Self-care doesn't always mean being selfish, but for me on Sunday, because I give so much of me, I have to be selfish on my Sunday self-care. And I go hiking. So since I found this new joy, it's something I also want to experience with my children. I want them right. to find to see something that I love. So um, one of the things Absolutely. that I wanted to do, because you know, both my old both my oldest children don't live here. So right. I want to experience that hiking with them so they can see what it love what it is that I love. Um and then, you know, we're gonna do the movie, we're gonna eat dinner together. And um that's just basically it. We're that's just gonna, gonna stay awesome. in the house and just 
drive each other crazy. We probably do <laughs> and enjoy each other's company. Well, tell tell us who you hike with. Give give a shout out to, to your group. To my girls track, the um, waterfall adventure swag. Hey y'all. Hey. <laughs> we go hiking every Sunday. So anyone who's looking to join this black women's movement group that we do, it's called Girl Track. Um, and you can go to girltrack.org. And you can sign up to join us. It's a black woman's movement where we walk, we exercise, we meditate, we pray. It's just like black women sticking together. And it's yes. wonderful. So we worldwide. So we finally just, we celebrating a, a million women. We actually got a million women. Um, yes. So that was a big accomplishment for us. That's a wonderful milestone. Yeah. So a million women walking. Black women, we, we do walk. And contrary to popular belief, we do hike. Right? Yes, Latrice said it. She said it right now. Like, we hike. I have been a witness. We we go camping. Black people, we do go camping. I've been camping several times. So, you know, for somebody who thinks, you know, black women don't don't do these things, we do them. We are out there. And now with Girl Trek, we are a million women strong. We actually had a we had the other Latrice, uh Chastity Latrice. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so we had her on a, a few months ago. Um, she came and talked to us about her weight loss journey, you know, her amazing journey um with weight loss and being part of Girl Trek. So we we're really yeah, are happy. So actually a great leader she is one of the ladies that we follow and i just i love her energy she always brings oh, energy back into it so it's really really great so if you guys really want to walk with us that's in newark you can also go to our page on facebook which is girl trek um on new jersey so on facebook yeah. is girl trek new jersey join us and you can find out where we're walking because we walk at least 30 minutes a day as a requirement girl trek want everyone to walk 30 minutes a day because walking is good just not just because it's good for your heart it's good for yes your health so exercise and walking eating the right way when we talk about our mental health when we talk about self-care all those things what comes to our mind we you know so many different people who have different you know things that come in their mind but they don't realize that walking actually is good for self-care it's actually Absolutely. good for mental health Absolutely. So that's, that's a part where I tell people all the time, Girl Trek actually saved my life because I suffer with mental health and dealing with this pandemic. And I was all stressed out. Just, you know, and I, when I found Girl Trek and I started walking and going hiking, I, I just found like a new place to vent. Like when you go out and when we out there hiking, we meditating and you just exactly. see these women and nobody judging you when it's like, Wow. Yes, it's amazing. And then you guys also go to the beach, right? You go to the beach oh my God. and you watch the sunrise. Yes. Just so we amazing. Sunrise, we watch the sunset. We watch the moon. Like we're just out there in nature. And there's no better place to release all your tension, stress, and anxiety but in nature. And you just watch and you see how wonderful God is and how wonderful things are. And it's just like, this is amazing. Absolutely. And it's, and it's just like, I'm stressed and I'm worried about what when all these beautiful things right here are around me. And this is the sound of the ocean. Yes, Absolutely. It just brings us back to gratitude, right? It, it brings us back to being grateful and, and the gratitude that we experience. Absolutely. So how can how can other yeah? yeah. No, I was just gonna say how can so other grateful, community members mm -hmm. go ahead? No, I just was saying when you're so grateful for so many things around you, the appreciation, you just can't be angry. Absolutely. You don't focus on being sad or you don't don't focus on being depressed. You just focus Agreed. on being and blessed that's right that's right absolutely i love that i love that so how can more family members become um, more empowered and active in their community i know you do a lot for our communities um what advice do you have for for other family members to get more empowered and just be more active in their community i just say that they believe that they just should help out people in need if you see if you see a problem you try to solve it don't wait for somebody else to fix it don't wait for nobody else to solve it you know right. you just just do what you need to do. Come in one family at a time, even if it starts with your own. So sometimes we can't pull from an empty cup. And we, yeah. and we may need somebody in our household may need. So we start from there. And once we start from there, then we reach out to the next person and the next person. You know, so I just say start with one person at a time. Somebody in need, you just help them. Don't wait for the next person to do it. Absolutely. And I, I know that's definitely part of your spirit and your positive energy and spirit rubs off on anybody who's in your space. Right. You're always welcoming family members. You had a picture on your Facebook post from last Thanksgiving. I think your house was like packed to the gills <laughs> right? with family that members. Christmas. <laughs> it oh was God. Christmas. So every Christmas, uh, Christmas Eve, I do for the past six years, I have a theme where we all dress up. And we do all these different things. But last year was the biggest ever. I had like over 50 people 
in my house oh, for Christmas, and we dressed up in um, Disney outfits. It was about this pajamas costume or a T-shirt, and my son dressed up as Santa every year, and he gave the kids it. Christmas gifts. So they get to have a black Santa. And, um, right. And we just take pictures, and we just have fun, and we eat. We do hot chocolate. Like, the kids either make pizza or they build a snowman with donuts. There's always something hands-on because I believe hands-on is a great therapeutic um, idea for kids and to help them just have fun and release a lot of tension. But our kids are always sitting around, right, and they don't have, they don't get a chance to be creative. Right, so absolutely. I, I want to get them that creative outlet. So those are things that I do. And we just have so much fun. So my family is calling me now this year, like, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? So I'm trying to create a, a funny venture for the kids without us having to all see each other because we can't be around each other this um, year. Right. Pandemic. So I'm thinking about this doing the Zoom and having kids and having cookies delivered to everybody's house where the kids actually decorate their own Christmas cookies themselves. So, Aww. you know, I'm trying to figure out exactly what we're going to do. But those are the things that, you know, you can do to stand in the spirit, keep everybody right. happy. And we'd be on Zoom whether my son makes a personal message to everybody and say something from Santa or, but I definitely want him to talk about the pandemic to the kids as yeah. Santa, where they can understand that. Unfortunately, right now, we all can't get together due to the pandemic and try to explain to them in a language that kids will understand, like, wash your hands, mask up, and just take care of yourself. So, you know, we want to make sure right. have fun, but also deliver that message. Absolutely. Absolutely. I love it. You guys always look like you have so much fun. I say one year, I'm just going to crash. I'm just going <laughs> to be knocking at your door, and well, I'm going to show up. <laughs> a lot of people said it. So this was the year I was really hoping like, to get a haul, and we was going to just try to all open up. We're supposed to do Nickelodeon this year where everybody dressed up in Nickelodeon costumes. And so it's going to be a, have a Nick Christmas and, you know, but I love it. Unfortunately, we couldn't. Yeah. But there are still, like you said, still things that you can do with your family, right? Even if you're not in the same space, still things you can do, still ways you can be together, still ways you can celebrate together, um, work together as a family and still have that gratitude, right? So <laughs> still be able to, to have that gratitude in your yeah, life. That's that's where the cookie idea come from. So everybody can yeah. have their cookies, post the pictures on, on the Zoom or our family Facebook page. So it's just still, we're still going to be together, but just in our own separate houses. The same way for Thanksgiving this year. We're all going to be still together. We're talking. We're going to cook together. My aunt live in Florida right now, so she can't come. But every year we make a peach cobbler together on FaceTime. So mm. still, there's different ways that you can still spend that time with your family and still get that one on one with the family tradition. So this, she said anyway. to me this year, she said, I think this is just our new tradition now. I said, mm. yeah, so I'm looking forward to doing it again. So every Thursday, well, every Thanksgiving in the morning, we do our peach cobbler on Facebook together. We make I sure love we that. Ingredients. We go, you know, we already know and we do everything at the same time. I love that. Passing on those recipes and, and having a good time doing it. So how can our viewers um, get more information about where to buy your amazing book? Where can they get more information about where to buy oh, your book? Um, I actually have hard copies um, available with me. If you um, contact me, you can contact Tasha and get it and she can reach me. I can give you um, an autographed copy if you get it personally through me. Or you can go on Amazon and they have the same shipping. It's $20 a book and it's called Define Your Path. Awesome. And you also have your Facebook group. I have your Facebook group oh, going yeah. across the bottom here. Um, That's my Facebook can, Guys, you can go up there. You can leave messages. I will um, email you back. I will talk to you. Um, so if, if you're looking for some fun and art activities for your child to work out some, I don't want to say aggression or anxiety, but to work out some need a creativity space yeah <laughs> you can um contact me i have a lot of wonderful fun ideas um let me see, let me show you guys uh, uh i mean i didn't have it here but something simple that i wanted to show you guys that kids could oh yes i did so this is something that you could do on your own if you have any children who are, are going through anything and you're not they're not really expressing themselves too well this is called fillings in the cup and it's two cups and you cut that out and it said my feelings. So with, they, they create happy, um, void. Oh, I love, love that. Them. This is love. This is them. They said any kind of way they want to express their emotions, they draw it themselves on the second cup. And you cut it out right here. You put it in here. So whenever they feel in some kind of way and they don't know how to express it, but they know what they're feeling, you can ask them, where's your feeling cup? How are you feeling? So this is something, this, for example, some of the things that you guys can do. So I just wanted to just give you something. I love that. 
So I love that. It's economical, right? You don't have to spend a lot of money. I love that. No, I absolutely it's, love that. It's a fun, it's a fun activity. You guys can actually do it this Thanksgiving if you want to with your family and the, the young kids to sit down together, get two paper cups and just have fun. So it's yep, called have them talk the about their feelings. I love that. I love that. Thank you so much, Latrice. This was so oh, great. Thing, I sure. To go to my Facebook page. It's called um a base the stigma um for Newark. New Jersey is on Facebook. It's called Evase the Stigma. So go up there. I put different quotes up there several times a day. It's, it's our page. What I want to do is Evase the Stigma here in North for Mental Health. I want people to know that they're not alone if they're feeling any kind of symptoms of depression, anxiety, bipolar. Like, we're all together. We're still one people. So go Absolutely. up there. That's Evase the Stigma. Read the different quotes. Help heal someone and share the information. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for your time here with us today. Thank you so much for being our guests. Um, and, and, and right now, you know, it's really important, like I said, during the holidays, you know, people are get sad, people, you know, are in depressive states, and especially with family members who are suffering from mental illness, this could be a difficult time for them. Um, thank you for your tips and tools for families, the ways they, they can help their families, and also ways that they can help themselves, right? Self-care and um, being having gratitude and all those things which are very helpful to, to our mental health. Um, right now, especially in this COVID environment, right? We already have a lot going on with COVID and then the holidays sometimes are, are compounded on that, especially with, you know, family members who have people who have passed away due to COVID and, and things like that. So we, we really appreciate the time that you took to talk to us today and the time you took to create your book. It's, an, like I said, it's an amazing book. Um, it's, it's really helped me with a lot of uh, the challenges and things that I've had in my life. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. If anyone knows anybody in the community that cannot, not people, people who cannot, our elder people who cannot get out to to the store or have funds to get any um, COVID supplies, they can contact you or they can leave it on my Facebook page and we will find a way to get them some supplies. Awesome. Thank you so much. And the, the last question that I have, just really quickly. Um, you know, the name of the, the show is the parent impact and name of the org is parent impact. So what in one or two words, what is your parent impact? Like, what is the impact that you make as a parent? Oh, wow. That's deep. I mean, I think I, I make a lot of impacts as a, as a, um, as a parent. Um, yeah. One is that I'm open to my kids. I listen to them. I think right. that having an open relationship and listening to them, it just, it creates a, a better bond where they don't have to hide out, hide who they are or hide different things from me. And I right. actually, because I'm that open, I experienced a situation with my daughter today. And when I really wanted to yell and just be like, ah, like what? But I realized that she was speaking to me to listen to her and not to overreact. And I just right. like, oh my God, being a parent is so hard. <laughs> It definitely is. Yeah, right. <laughs> it definitely is. So I think that's one of my parent impacts. You know, just just listening to my kids and and creating that space where I want them to be able to come to me and talk to me and be comfortable talking to me. Awesome, and that that's that's a fantastic impact to make as a parent. So thank you again, Latrice. We appreciate you. Have a happy Thanksgiving, and I will be looking forward to seeing your pictures on Facebook <laughs> and everything that you continue to do for our community. Stay blessed, and have a, have a great great week. You guys, happy Thanksgiving. Thank you. Have a good one. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Another great episode of The Parent Impact. So happy to be able to talk to Latrice Smith today in her book, Define Your Path. It's a great book. Uh, please, please talk to your family members who are suffering from mental illness. Please have those conversations with your family members this week. The holidays can be a difficult time for everyone going through COVID and then now going through the holidays. She gave us some great tips. Talk to your family. There's things that you can do over Zoom, ways that you can still stay connected. And for family members who you've lost this year or you know, at any point, just really think about, have gratitude for the time that you had with them and the things that you did together and really start to do things to, to keep their memory alive with, within your, your house and your space. So with that, I wanna wish everybody a happy Thanksgiving. You'll be seeing us again next Tuesday for everybody who has a couple of days off, enjoy it, do some binge watching, um, you know, eat, eat way too much, get full, enjoy your family, enjoy your space while you're at it, please. Sign up for membership, the National Parents Union. Go to our website, www.nationalparentsunion.org. Membership is open. If you'd like to be a member, we would love for everyone to become members of the National Parents Union. 
Also, we have our second parent clap back town hall happening on December the 3rd at 8 p.m. So please also sign up for that. And while the presidential election is over, we still have some elections that are happening across the country. We have some runoffs. So if you are in any of those states, um, you know, ballots are still being mailed. Please continue to pay attention. Please continue to keep the same energy. Continue to have those conversations with your family about voting, even the second time, right? Every family votes. And we all know that our communities are made better when all, when every single family goes out and cast that ballot even the second time. So have a good evening. Have a fantastic week. Happy Thanksgiving. And we'll see everyone next week. Thank you. Good night.